Trump threatens broadcaster NBC after nuclear report. President Trump criticized NBC's report as he welcomed Canada's Prime Minister to the White House. U.S. President Donald Trump has raised the prospect of challenging media licenses for NBC News and other news networks after unfavorable reports. He took aim at NBC, which made him a star on The Apprentice after it reported he wanted to boost America's nuclear arsenal almost tenfold. Mr. Trump labeled the report fake news and pure fiction. NBC also angered the White House last week when it said the Secretary of State had called Mr. Trump a moron. Trump's long-standing nuclear fixation. Trump in the nuclear codes. What is Donald Trump's IQ? Mr. Trump tweeted on Wednesday morning. With all of the fake news coming out of NBC and the networks, at what point is it appropriate to challenge their license? Bad for country. Welcoming Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to Washington later in the day, the U.S. president denied the NBC story. It is frankly disgusting the way the press is able to write whatever they want to write, and people should look into it, he said at the White House. When asked if he wanted to increase the country's arsenal, Mr. Trump said he only ever discussed keeping it in perfect condition. No, I want to have absolutely perfectly maintained, which we are in the process of doing, nuclear force. Media captioned Trump, I want nuclear weapons in perfect condition. But when they said I want ten times what we have right now, it's totally unnecessary, believe me. He added, I want modernization and I want total rehabilitation. It's got to be in tip-top shape. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis also disputed NBC's story. Recent reports that the president called for an increase in the U.S. nuclear arsenal are absolutely false, he said in a statement. This kind of erroneous reporting is irresponsible. The president's tweet about U.S. broadcast networks provoked a free speech uproar. Walter Schaub, who led the U.S. Office of Government Ethics under President Barack Obama, said it could lead to the point when we cease to be a democracy. The Committee to Protect Journalists said the U.S. president's comment was a poor example for other world leaders. According to NBC News, Mr. Trump told a top-level meeting at the Pentagon in July that he wanted to dramatically boost the American stockpile of atomic missiles. He reportedly made the request after seeing a downward sloping curve on a briefing slide charting the gradual decrease in U.S. nuclear weapons since the 1960s. Attributing its report to three officials in the room, NBC said Mr. Trump's request surprised those present, including the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State Rex Tiswain. Media caption Rex Tiswain reacts to a report he called the president a moron. The network reported that Mr. Trump had also called for additional U.S. troops and military equipment. The U.S. has 7,100 nuclear weapons and Russia has 7,300, according to the U.S. Nonpartisan Arms Control Association. Media commentators say the president would struggle to remove broadcasters' licenses if he wished to do so. The Federal Communications Commission, which regulates U.S. broadcasters, issues licenses not to networks as a whole, but to local stations. NBC owns nearly 30 local stations. It would be difficult to challenge a license on the basis that coverage is unfair, say pundits. Trump's unworkable threat. Analysis by Anthony Zerker, BBC North America reporter. Last week, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders assured reporters that Donald Trump was an incredible advocate of constitutional free press protections. This week, the president is contemplating, just wondering, whether a broadcaster could be forced off the airwaves because he doesn't approve of its news coverage. Never mind that the federal government licenses local television stations, only some of which are owned by national broadcasters like NBC. Just because a threat is unworkable in the extreme doesn't mean the president won't make it. Media bashing is one of Mr. Trump's favorite pastimes, a means of venting frustration, apportioning blame and, perhaps, distracting reporters who always enjoy a bit of journalistic navel-gazing. As with the NFL and kneeling controversy, the cultural battle lines form quickly when it comes to questions of media bias. 
The president knows this and uses it to his advantage. Taking potshots at journalists is one thing, of course, contemplating the use of government coercion to stifle a broadcaster because of its news content is another. Even if such an outcome is unthinkable in the U.S. at the moment, there are places in the world where press freedoms aren't as deeply entrenched. Their leaders are watching the president, too.